Welcome back to Full Disclosure and our program featuring the candidates who are challenging incumbent Los Angeles District Attorney Steve Cooley. Earlier this year, there was a large media event where top law enforcement agencies from across the nation met at the LAPD's 77th Precinct Station to explain how the federal government was working to support local law enforcement. This program was led by U.S. Attorney Tom O'Brien. Thank you for joining us today. The Attorney General of the United States has come to Los Angeles today to meet with community groups, law enforcement personnel, and prosecutors in my office to discuss problems caused by criminal gangs that plague so many Southern California neighborhoods. Also featured was Mayor Antonio Villaragosa, LAPD Chief Bill Bratton, and the U.S. Attorney General Michael McCossey. Full disclosure was mystified that our own district attorney, Steve Cooley, wasn't even present at this supposedly important event. We asked Mr. Ibsen why the DA's office wasn't even represented at this gang conference. Uh, the mayor, the police chief talk about what they're doing about gangs, but the right. district attorney wasn't there. Where right. is he on the gang initiative? You know, I, the where is he on anything that is of significance or political uh, importance is, is uh, a good question. I think this district attorney's priority has been I want to get reelected. I want to be the only one ever to have three terms and if I touch anything that's important to the community people will see who I am, they'll know my name and maybe they won't vote for me. So the lie low approach has been Mr. Cooley's approach. Mr. Robles endorses the gang report by Los Angeles City Auditor Laura Chick. Laura Chick did a fantastic uh, report as to where the various gang prevention programs are and their successes and failures. And that report should have served as a framework as to how to proceed and address the gang problems. Because you're right, you just can't throw mo good money after bad money, especially if it's just going into a black hole and you're not seeing any results. But I grew up in Carson. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in an area where 50% of the kids my age as I was going did not graduate from high school. Uh, I was I consider myself fortunate and lucky to have gotten out and graduated and you know went on and had a, a, a successful educational uh, foundation established to then perpetuate me to future success. But not everybody is like me, and I, I think that um, it, it's these gang cartels and the gangs that they they deal with are are a significant threat to to our society and are a big problem. Uh, Mayor Villaragosa yesterday or recently um, said that he was revamping the gang um, programs within the city of Los Angeles, but yet he refused to allocate any monies for the South Bay cities as if they had no gang problem. And why he did that, I don't know, but that's a problem. I think that needs to be looked at. Mr. Ibsen sees illegal immigration as a significant factor in the gang problem. He proposes increasing the enforcement of immigration laws to help control gang crime. I'll tell you what happens in, in the DA's office. We do absolutely nothing to assist in uh, seeking the deportation of gang members that commit serious and violent crimes. Nothing. Uh, we have, he has a, a slew of DA investigators who are assigned to just be his personal bodyguards and chauffeurs. These DA investigators need to be assigned to assisting prosecutors in doing our, our work to protecting the community. They should be assigned to assisting us in determining whether the people we're prosecuting are illegal alien gang members that need to be deported after they do their sentence so they're not released in the community to murder our citizens. I just met the other day with Jamil Shaw uh, uh, Sr., uh, the father of the murdered Jamil Shaw, who is a a brilliant, wonderful star athlete at 17 years old, gunned down by a, a criminal gang member import who was here illegally uh, that was just released. And, and we've completely, completely ignored the fact that some of these gang members are illegal aliens and need to be deported because other, other countries are exporting them to us. The gangs recognize they want gang members in Los Angeles to commit crimes to benefit their gang economically. And for us to be under siege in this way by gangs and for law enforcement to ignore it is, is immoral because people suffer. People are murdered, people are assaulted, our children are, are uh, under attack and uh, we're doing nothing. And the district attorney is turning a blind eye to it as though it doesn't happen. 
He's blaming the sheriff. He's blaming the police chief as though they're the only ones that can check the citizenship. It's a flat-out lie. But it's not only an immigration issue. Mr. Robles considers the sinister involvement of the Mexican drug cartels to be a corrupting influence on public officials in L.A. County. Well, they're a big threat. And, you know, the L.A. Weekly did a very thorough investigation, an expose type article on precisely this, uh, this problem and specifically dealing with the city of uh, Cudahy, where it was, again, reported in the L.A. Weekly that uh, some of the city administrators and uh, maybe even some of the council members were fronts or involved with the drug cartel. And the district attorney started to investigate. But these same individuals then hired a criminal defense attorney who was very close friends with Steve Cooley, who had help raise significant amounts of money for his campaign both in 2000 and 2004 and that investigation went nowhere it just disappeared and going back to precisely the problem as I mentioned earlier that taking money from the criminal defense bar as Steve Cooley has is has caused people to question the decisions he makes in refusing to prosecute and investigate certain alleged uh, criminal activity and that's a very clear example. According I to Mr. Ibsen, this shouldn't be happening. He is adamant that the DA's office currently has the necessary resources to investigate gangs, drug cartels, and public officials. He says that Mr. Cooley is wasting these resources. And The DA's office is in a position we have hundreds of investigators, we have hundreds of police officers, that could be used to make sure that we know when we're prosecuting an illegal alien gang member. We don't use them for that. Let me tell you some ways we do use it. This district attorney uses police officers in our office to investigate his own people, to investigate deputy district attorneys who may have used a bad word or may have an inappropriate picture in their office, to do simple internal uh, personnel investigations. He uses a storm trooper tactic of having two police officers go up to a deputy district attorney that carries a badge, uh, goes into the courtroom, and tells them to come in the hallways. No DA has ever done this before. Mr. Garcetti didn't do it. Mr. Reiner didn't do it. But Mr. Cooley likes using his investigators to police his own prosecutors, not to help police the community. That's a complete waste of time, and it's done for one reason only, and that's to demoralize and control his prosecutors and uh, it's wrong. And I've had it happen to me. Two, two DA investigators come into court, interrupt court proceedings to say I had to go meet with an attorney over an issue relate, relating to another deputy DA. But you don't use your 300 investigators to police your own team. You use them to protect the public safety. Mr. Ibsen is adamant that the gangs will continue to terrorize LA until the DA's office takes a more active role in defeating them. You know, no one can do the job Steve Cooley won't do. He can say it's not my job, but others, we're a team. We are uh, law enforcement, police, sheriffs, prosecutors, and probation officers need to work as a team. No one organization can do it alone. And even at that, the battle to stop crime, the odds are against us. It's not, can we stop all crime, because that's impossible, but we can sure stop a lot of it if we do our jobs right. And for the DA to be absent and not participate and say it's somebody else's responsibility is, is wrong. And uh, it may be politically smart, because he doesn't want to take a position on how we deal with the gang problem in Los Angeles. He may want to act as though it's not his problem. But if it's not this district attorney's problem, who is it? Uh, if, if you're living in L.A. County, ask yourself, have I seen great changes in the last eight years promised by Steve Cooley? He said, get rid of Gil Garcetti and you'll see great changes. Have you seen great changes in L.A. County? From within the office, I've seen changes that I don't like. We're not safer. We're only going to fix the problems with bold new ideas. We can't just throw more money at the problem and uh, lock more children up. We have to have a new approach to the gang problem. We have to start working with the federal government because it's an international problem. And for the federal government on a gang issue to show up and for Steve Cooley to take a pass and say, I'm not part of that, shows he's out of touch with the community. He doesn't understand the gang problem. He's not willing to prosecute it the way it needs to be done. 
That means more gang members in your community who are preying on your children either to recruit them into gangs or to victimize them and shoot them, rob them, sell drugs to them. And the district attorney has to participate, and I would.